This week, I thought I'd show you around the Hildebrand Glow Display and CAD, give you a bit of a tour of the device and then cover some more advanced features. I know that I've mentioned this gadget in a couple of my previous videos and I'm going to show you exactly why it's so useful to a home automation setup. Hildebrand have a number of brand and product names which can be quite confusing to keep track of, so I'll just go over that here quickly before I begin. So Hildebrand is the main company name and they tend to work directly with businesses and energy providers, but they have a consumer division called Glow. They sell their Glow products through a website called Glow Market. Glow, Glow Market? Market? Mark? And finally, there's the app, which is called Bright. Got that? On with the review. On the face of it, it's just a regular smart meter in home display. It connects to your Smets 2 smart meter and Hildebrand will set that up for you before they send it to you. And it can display your live power usage and your historical uh, energy usage on this graph in 30 minute intervals. And it does that for both gas and electricity. So here's the gas here. Um, and if your supplier's tariff is supported, it can also um, tell you how much you're spending. So £29.71 for me this month so far. So why should you spend over £70 on this smart meter display? Well, it's all about those last three letters in the product name, CAD, which stands for Consumer Access Device. If you want live access to the data coming out of your smart meter, you need a CAD. And if you're in the UK, then this Glow display is currently your one and only option as an ordinary consumer. The display connects to your Wi-Fi network and sends live data from your smart meter to the Glow servers somewhere in the cloud. You can then use the Bright app to view your live power consumption. Without the CAD, you only get delayed historical energy consumption data in the app. But what makes Glow invaluable to home automation is that all of this data, live and historical, is accessible via the Glow Cloud API and even an MQTT feed. This is brilliant because it means you can create automations that can make use of live power consumption updated approximately every six seconds or so. The energy data you get from the API or MQTT feed can be used in the Home Assistant Energy Dashboard, if you make use of that. And both the energy and power readings that you get from Glow, which come directly from your smart meter, will be far more accurate than any CT clamp solution such as My Energy Harvey, which essentially estimates your energy usage based on your power consumption over time. There are two ways of integrating Glow into Home Assistant. The first way is in theory supposed to be the easiest. You install a custom component via Hacks. However, that custom component is currently archived by the developer and I couldn't personally get it to work. Instead, I opted for the difficult method, manually connecting Home Assistant to Glow's MQTT feed. I can't take credit for the method I'm about to show you because I found it on GitHub at uh, this location and I'll put the link to that in the description of the video. Um, I have made a few minor tweaks to the process here so uh, be aware as we go forward that it's slightly different. Now you can just go ahead and connect Home Assistant straight to Glow's MQTT broker if you wanted to. But the problem with doing that is Home Assistant has a limitation of only supporting a connection to a single MQTT broker. MQTT is used by a lot of other components too, such as Z-Wave to MQTT and Zigbee to MQTT. So to work around this, we have to use a local MQTT broker to bridge a connection to Glow's MQTT broker. I'm saying MQTT quite a lot today and it is very difficult to say. So bear with me. Now you need to make sure that you have an MQTT broker running somewhere on your local network. If you already know what you're doing with this and have one running already, then great. But if you don't, then I suggest you go to Home Assistant's add-on store and install the Mosquito add-on. When setting up the add-on, make sure that the customized section has a parameter called active set to true and a folder parameter with a value of Mosquito. This tells Mosquito to re read additional configuration files in another location. Uh, keep in mind Mosquito has got two T's in it at this time. Next, you need to connect to a share on your Home Assistant server itself called Share. You may have come across the config share already where most of your data is kept, but we need to access one called just Share. 
Um, you can use normal network browsing uh, if you know how to do that, authenticating with your Home Assistant credentials, which is my preferred route. Or you can use the File Browser add-on and browse to your server's file system from the web interface. Uh, whichever way you do it, you need to create a folder within the share called Mosquito. Note the lowercase and double T again. In that folder, you create a new file called glow.conf. If you're using the web interface, you'll probably need to create this file locally on your computer and upload it to the correct location. The contents of that glow.conf file should look like this. The first line is just a name for the connection, but the other two lines are your glow credentials and the last line is the topic. This will be a unique MQTT name and you'll need this to create your sensors later. That 12 character number in the topic is your Glow Display ID, so make sure that you get that right. Once the file is in place, restart the Mosquito service or add-on and it should, in theory, be ready to go. Now, we need to create some sensors in Home Assistant and this is where I diverge quite a bit from the GitHub page I showed you earlier. We need to manually edit our configuration YAML file, find the sensor section and add several new sensors. For electricity, I wanted to know the instantaneous power reading, total energy imported, and the total energy exported values. With that power reading, if I use the configuration from that GitHub page, then whenever I exported power, the value would go crazy due to the use of base 16 values. So I adapted it to ensure that imported power values are positive and exported power values are negative. For gas, I wanted both the cubic meters value uh, which is what my physical meter values represent, and the kilowatt hour value, which is what I'm building. For my meter, getting the cubic meters value is easy. Um, just make sure that you use superscript three, not a regular three in the unit of measurement field. Uh, but getting kilowatt hours in a, a useful format was trickier. Add the sensors you need to your configuration, check the YAML for errors, and then restart Home Assistant, and your sensors should appear for you to use. And that's it. And finally, I can't end this video until I talk about what's wrong with the device, because it isn't perfect. What is annoying is the reliance on Glow's cloud servers. Those servers are working for most of the time, but there have been at least three outages that I've experienced during the seven months so far that I've been using it. And the thing is, it really shouldn't be a problem because a device like this should really allow you to access it locally. It does seem pointless to send this data out from my home to their servers only for me to then have to go back out to their servers to bring it back again locally. I know many of the users on their forum feel the same way and have been pressuring Hildebrand to provide a local API or MQTT feed through a firmware update. They have responded and are releasing a CAD without a display uh, that will support local access to your data at release. You need to contact them and ask them to go on a waiting list if you want one though, because they're not available yet through their shop. When I heard about this uh, new CAD with local access, I sent another email to the ever patient Jane asking if local access will ever come to the glow display that I have. She replied very diplomatically to say that yes, it will eventually, but there are no time frames for it. This is good news for me and a sensible decision for Hildebrand because the more users who access their data locally, the lower the load is on their servers. And in theory, the more reliable their product is because there are fewer things to go wrong for a certain percentage of their users at least. With that bad point out of the way, I'd still suggest you get one of these if you need to monitor your power and energy usage in Home Assistant. There is no real alternative product out there that I'm aware of that can do this, so they've really cornered the market. Well, I'll end this video here. If you liked this video, then please click the thumbs up button, and if you'd like to see more videos from me, then please subscribe to my channel. Thank you for watching. Goodbye. Bye.